Do you have that guitar that you love like family? I do. I wanted to learn a little history about my number one. If you want to hear about a lesser known but highly versatile Gibson guitar, then join me for the next episode of I Don't Have a Band, right now. Welcome to episode 8 of I Don't Have a Band. In this episode, I want to introduce you to the guitar I affectionately call Howard. The Howard Roberts Fusion 3 is from a line of signature Gibson guitars from the early to mid 90s associated with the late great guitarist Howard Roberts. In his prime, Howard Roberts was known as a workhorse, doing as many as 900 studio dates a year as a session player. He also built an illustrious catalog of soul albums from the 1950s through to the 1970s. He was a brilliant jazz guitarist that blurred the lines for other jazz, country and rock guitarists because of the incredible technical skills, passion and genuine feel he brought to all of his recordings and performances. He was once described as a jazz guitarist who could play anything with a sound to match. He was one of the genre's greatest players and also one of the most recorded guitarists in commercial music history. Howard Roberts co-founded the Guitar Institute of Technology, now known as the Musicians Institute. So his legacy will live on as an inspiration to aspiring musicians for generations to come. Roberts had an extensive collection of guitars. Some of his notable ones included an Epiphone Deluxe that he sported in the 1940s. Into the 50s he played a Gibson ES-175 and an L10. His trademark guitar in the 60s and 70s, known as the Black Guitar, was a heavily modified Gibson ES-150. Epiphone first issued a Howard Roberts signature model in the mid-60s, which eventually showed up under the Gibson brand. He played this first prototype after retiring his black guitar in 1973 until he passed away in 1992. In the 1970s, Gibson issued two Howard Roberts models, the Howard Roberts Custom and the Artist. In 1979, Gibson introduced a Howard Roberts Fusion. I first noticed this guitar because Alex Lifeson played one on Rush's Moving Pictures. Listen to Tom Sawyer. That's the Howard. This guitar defined the look and sound of a guitar for me. By the time I saw my first one up close, Gibson had released the third generation of the Fusion. I spotted it at a music show. All black with gold hardware and that signature fingers tailpiece. I was in high school at the time and couldn't afford it, but I swore I would buy one as soon as I could. Shortly after I was hired for my first decent paying professional job, I found myself browsing the Gibson website. There it was in all its splendor. At this point, there was only one question that needed to be answered, red or black. You can see which way I went. The Howard Roberts Fusion is an incredibly versatile guitar. It's a jazz guitar, but this beast can rock. Doing my best impersonation of a jazz guitarist, here are some of the sweeter tones it can produce. On the rock side, I love the Howard for solos. You can create an aggressive sound while maintaining good clarity. Here's one of the solos from my song, The Switch, featuring the Howard. As a rhythm guitar, the Howard can give you that true full-bodied sound. Here's a rhythm part for my track BFR. Here are some basic specs on the Howard Roberts Fusion 3. It has a semi hollow body design with a maple laminated top, back, and sides, and multi ply top binding. The neck is maple with a 59 rounded profile ebony fingerboard, and perloid dot inlays. It has two Gibson humbuckers, a 490R in the neck position, and a 490T in the bridge. I absolutely love the Howard in the studio. It is such a versatile instrument that finds its way into a variety of roles. If I could only have one axe in the studio, I could easily get it all done with the Howard Roberts Fusion 3. I hope you've enjoyed meeting Howard as much as I've enjoyed presenting him to you. If you like what I'm doing, drop me a note into the comments. 
If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure to do so to stay up to date. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you can do by yourself right from your very own home. Thanks for watching.